Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad and Supercoach Pro. Today's video we're doing a round seven Supercoach review and also the round eight preview. Um, just a bit of a two in one for you. Um, I haven't had a lot of time this week, to be honest. My family, in particular my sister's down from New Zealand this weekend, just gone. So didn't get a lot of time watching the footy, which is rare for me. Normally I watch about seven or eight games out of a possible nine. So yeah, if I'm a bit vague on some players, do apologise. Um, yeah, miss a little bit of footy over the weekend, but for family, I think that's more important. Um, <clears throat> so we lost a little bit of ranking here. Scored two, three, five, four. Um, better any other week, uh, but it's unfortunate because a lot of teams scored above two five, and I knew I would be scoring pretty bad this week because um, I made a sacrifice by going two down, one up, and that's the price you pay. But it was more for a long term solution. Um, brought in a few players. We'll have a look at that. Season rank, 9,043. It's still pretty respectable um, going into round eight. Um, what did we do? History is here. You know, the back line's pretty solid. I think it's just my midfield this year that's actually killing me. Um, probably should have spent up on the midfield, but there just wasn't enough rookies in the back line to justify going um, top-heavy in the midfield. So what I end up doing, uh, if you have all my trade history, I think I was thereabouts on point with my trades going into it. I think I made a slight adjustment. But out Grundy, uh, brought in Hayes and fielded Hayes. And then I had to get rid of uh, Cherry. I think I've been saying Terry this whole time. Um, I feel like an idiot. I just realised that after watching some of my videos, I've been calling him Terry with a T. Anyway, Rochelle out as well, which is good because his break even was about 80. And yeah, brought in Oliver and Rosa as well, just for some cash gen for these two, Rosa and Hayes. And yeah, Oliver didn't go nuts against Hawthorne, which was really annoying because I had the VC on him. Um, and yeah, I lost about 100 points not having Gorn in my side because I was not expecting Gorn to outscore um, Oliver that much. Uh, for some reason, I've gone to head-to-head matchups. Um, that's not what I wanted. And yeah, we'll start from the back line as per usual. Um, just waiting for it to load because I'm sitting in the lounge room as opposed to my bedroom. Um, first world problems, right? So, um, Cripps 103, right on his season average here. Uh, he's still pretty cheap, so not a bad option if you wanted to bring him in. Plays the Tigers. We'll probably spray a few shots, so probably... Getting a bit of ball back, half back, or in the midfield, probably better some clearances. Either way, he's going to get a lot of ball. Um, we don't tag, so it could even be a sneaky VC, to be honest. And Sicily, yeah, well, this guy's just incredible. Um, averaging 108 now. Bought him for like 470 or something like that three weeks ago, I believe. So, yeah, looks to be a great pickup in that back line. Hewitt didn't play. Uh, I think I had my emergency on De Conning. Um, Scored 77, which is fine. And this week, I'm going to have the emergency on McCartan because they play Gold Coast. And if he scores under 60, I'm just going to put the Gonning on field there. 152 from Short's interesting. Um, that Richmond West Coast game, uh, they belted him and he got a lot of midfield minutes sort of playing off the stoppage. Yeah, not the direct center bounce all the time, but don't know if that'll be a permanent move going forward considering Dusty and Cotchin's back and players like that. So... Interesting to see where he lines up this week, but yeah, it looked like they found one if they want him put through the midfield, and it would be handy for DPP eligibility by round 12 in the buyers to go forward, uh, sorry, mid-defence would be awesome. Luke Ryan, sort of knew this pick would suck um, against the Cats, and yeah, just stuck it up, 62, 91 average, pretty average. Like, he'd be the first player I flick once my team's upgraded. Um, I think if you've got a Whitfield type two, they're the kind of guys you just move on as soon as you've upgraded your team completely. I just got 57. This is so annoying. Uh, he's got a break even of about 77, I think. Um, plays north, so I'm not going to flick him just yet. But yeah, it's just such a disappointing pick. You know, he he's made me 140k, but um, or 150k, whatever it is. But I just fielded him when he hasn't had the tons so yeah annoying but what do you do uh, i trust him this week against north melbourne because north melbourne pretty average but it'll just be we probably one of these two um and then yeah in the midfield 89 to mccray uh, i don't even want to speak about mccray just annoying 
no VC and C option for me. You could do it on on, on the Friday night if you had no sort of um, late loops, but I think you're almost better off trying Dunkley now. Um, but Bonzapelli's not playing this week, so maybe he gets a really high score. Thinking about that now, and actually might be okay for a VC. Um, and Neil, yeah, man, this is incredible. Like 187, I was riding to the sunset, you know, round seven, thinking, oh, you beauty took Miller 160, captained him like I said I would in my preview, and rode the horse to the sky. And mate, Neil just does one better. So, <laughs> so frustrating. But look, it's not not a lot of points difference, but yeah, typical Neil things, I guess. And Clary, disappointing. Like, yeah, you probably think that's a bit rich coming from a 119, but you you debut this guy against Hawthorne um, mids. Callum Mills scores 200 and something, and this bloke scores 119. Like, man, I didn't want to pay up for him, and that's why I bought him in last week because I was going to go up 20, 30K. Didn't want to miss that boat and pay crazy money. Paid crazy money anyway and just got peanuts for it. So... I was hoping for a 150 and didn't, didn't progress. Um, and the 119 didn't take, so yeah, captain took for once and paid off for once too. So green 107 um, hasn't averaged for me too well um, since I brought him in sort of that 107 range really. Um, probably looks to be an M8. I kind of regret this. I probably should have bought him at 430K, not at 500, whatever it was. And day cost 75, pretty solid from him. Um, I heard he's missing this week, so kind of weird the green lights on him. Yeah, apparently, he's got the flu, so that's really strange, but yeah, whatever. Super coach, um, Barry 48, he's gone, mate. He's done his role, average 75 for the season. In the last week, he was averaging 80. Um, he's lost a little bit of money, but he's made about 100 and something K there, and he's gone for me. But this block, um, Nick Martin's a weapon. Uh, could be a keeper down forward. Maybe I flip him to English when English goes back um, into the lineup there. And I think they gave him a two-year deal, so well done, Martin. Uh, just in the name, I guess, isn't it? Um, Horn Francis, yeah, is what it is. You can chop him, but his break even's reset now. It's pretty low. Can probably make it this week. Um, Who does he play? He plays Freo. That might be a little bit tough, but... Yeah, and Ward McDonald, whatever, you know, they're pretty useless rookies. You can probably flip them to Clark when he gets his uh, third game, so I don't go early on rookies. Clark's not playing. And I won't even bring him in next week if he plays. I'll wait till he's on the bubble, name for his third, and actually plays. So that's what you get for bringing in rookies early. You do get punished. And, um, yeah, I can use him as a downgrade for Dixon in two weeks and still make a bit more money on these players instead of getting... A rookie early, not really fattening up your cash cows, which is how you're meant to play the game. But whatever, I can understand that you know you want points on field, but I think cash is um, the better solution, especially early rounds. Uh, yeah, um, Proust 109, here's what it is from him. Like, don't know even if you know if you really need to upgrade this bloke, and once you go on the Gorn at some point, maybe when he gets 100k different to him, then you do it, or he gets suspended or does something stupid. Um, and yeah, Hayes53, thanks mate for doing stuff all. I understand the conditions didn't suit him up in Cairns or wherever it was, so yeah, it is what it is there. Um, and I guess not a lot of set of ounces, like if they're scoring that low, that's probably one of them too, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I think everyone's doing that, that doesn't have wits and gone, so whatever. That's where I lost my 150 points um, to score me 2-3, so yeah, it's just probably in that ruck department alone so I probably need to trade in someone like Sean Darcy next week who I'll talk about next week potentially see how he goes against North um, Dunkley 139 this guy is probably one of your best sneaky VCs um, for the season Henny 103 yeah pretty solid from the bloke he's not scoring 130s which I was afraid of and then I don't even get him for those sort of scores which is annoying but I keep using that word, so I do apologise, but to go he's 60, he can get stuffed at some point. Um, he's useless. He'll probably kick a bag against Richmond and win them the game or something, and then that would really annoy me because he'd get a high score against us, which is not what I want to see because he'd be throwing the TV out the window, potentially. And Brody 75, yeah, is what it is. Like, you can't complain for a bloke that you started right and he's still averaging 96, so I'm not going to flick him. 
an 89 for Butters, just under his season average. So nice to see it's not a 60, but it could have been a 130, but at least he does have that middle, that, no, ah, that middle ground now. So sorry, I forgot how to speak English for a second. And Canelo, 108, yeah, that's pretty solid from here, mate. So take that every day of the week for Cogs. And um, yeah, rookies, mate, they're just average. I uh, don't think there's too much on the watch list that's interesting. Um, I'm not really sure if I've updated my watch list uh, as of late. Nice to see my rookies are getting fatted. Um, I can probably get rid of Tom Mitchell now off that watch list. Luke Parker's still there. Now they've got Oliver, probably don't got that same hunger for Petrak. Um, Walsh, yeah, I can cross off Oliver there. Hobbs, oh man, if you've got Hobbs, he's still playing. I don't know how. Maybe because um, Stringer's out with a hammy. Hayes can get off my list. Don't know why I still got Green on my list when I got this bloke. You know, just wait on these one, these you know one game rookies, and this is why, as I was saying about five minutes earlier, this guy is not playing because of uh, health and safety protocols, whatever you want to call them. GWS rookies, you can get off my list. Um, Keys is a good one. Um, I think he's a good pod. Players can't this week. Probably play all right. And Crips, I have to bring in this week. Wines is on my list for that very reason. You go have a look at his data. You know, he's a pretty good player. He's at his cheapest. He's got a 92 break even. He's only cheap because he had that 50 game where he come off of some... I don't know if it's a heart problem. I don't want to quote anything, but, you know, he missed a week for it. And, yeah, his price is down to 500k. So not a not a bad M8. And Dangerfield, just one on my radar to see if he starts pumping out some scores after his injury setback. And this is the other guy, Beg, um, with oh, whatever his name is out. Grundy, he might actually get some opportunity. He wasn't great in the hitouts, but did get a lot of a ball around the ground. So Robbie Newcomb and Cripps are the guys in my side this week. Um, how I'm going to do that will all depend on um, last minute stuff. So... I really don't make trades until the last minute. Um, for example, Port Adelaide, right? If um, Hayes is like on 20 at half time, I'm going to put Dixon here um, and then trade out Hayes, Horn Francis. I've got to keep O'Driscoll and I have to trade out Berry. Um, but if Sam Hayes is doing well, and I put Hayes back there to loop the score because I want points. I really want points this weekend. And, um, yeah, figured out a different move. Uh, maybe Horn Francis, Berry, and Ward or someone like that can go. And basically the three I want to bring in um, is Parker, Cripps, and Robbie Newcomb. And it's just a matter of how I do it. Um, and yeah, like I say, it's just a couple of moves I'm just waiting on for the Friday night game. Obviously, I've got to make it pretty quick, that decision. I'll probably have half time to have a look at Hayes' score and then make my make my move and could even potentially bring in somebody like Sean Darcy last minute, like 10 minutes before the game <laughs> and um, maybe just pick Cripps and maybe not Martin, uh, sorry, not Parker because my, my, my forward line's actually okay. So... That's the team going into the round. Um, oh man, VC, you got a VC, Neil, don't you? Um, Captain Clary, or the other one could be VC in McRae. Now the Bont's not there. Into Neil. I don't know what I'm going to go. It'll probably be a last minute thing. Maybe before we should pregame, see how McRae looks. If we get a bit of a vibe, just go with it. Um. I'm no hippie by any man, but sometimes you get some gun instincts and you like that Took Miller one last week. I was just like, man, just going to jump on Took and, and, and just wrote it. So I just go with instinct sometimes and have a look at their history um, against these teams as well and just see if anything stands out for you. Is it the stadium that they score well at? Is it the actual team they score well against? Um you know, is anyone tagging from the other side? Just have all those little small details. What's the weather conditions like even? Like sometimes I look at rucks and if they're um, playing in a, a, a wet game, I want to pick them because they're going to get a lot of contests um, and hit outs. So 
there's a lot of technical things you can look at. I mean, yeah, look, West Coast barely have any players, so I think the right move would to be doing Neil. Um, even McRae against Port Adelaide, what has he scored? My, my internet's no good in this um, dining room, I'll tell you that. Anyway, I think that'll, that'll do for my round review slash preview. A uh, bit of a different one. I won't be doing these ones all the time. I just think, you know, sometimes when life's busy, it's easier to do one take instead of just doing a review and a preview. But that's the score. Uh, team, sorry, going into the round. Don't worry about your projected. Projected can go get stuffed. It's never even close to what you actually get anyway. And, yeah, if you look like me and you lost points because you brought in um, rookies, two down, one up, when this week you can go two up, one down, you'll make up the points that you lost, hopefully. So I'll leave that there. Um, and, yeah, just remember, if you want to have a look at your trade history, it is, it is there. Um, there is some pretty bad moves here. Like, shouldn't have got rid of Crips so far and probably shouldn't have got rid of Rao. But the rest are okay, apart from the goalie pick so far. Everything else I'm pretty happy with. So, yeah, um, take care, guys. Any comments uh, that you want answered in the comments below, just write, uh, write them in there. You know what I'm trying to say. It's pretty much the end of the video. So any trade advice, chuck them in, and I'll uh, catch you guys on the round review on Sunday or Monday.